It's uh, very uh, nice uh, to be here uh, finally in Saragossa. Um, so today I'm going to present some of uh, uh, the, the motivation that uh, drove us uh, uh, to Nanopec, some of our uh, results, and, uh, and uh, I will also emphasize some of the challenges, many challenges that, uh, that we have in, uh, in the project. So uh, these are the participants of uh, NanoPEC uh, project, and I will mention them during uh, my, uh, my presentations. So I think that the main motivation uh, for uh, NanoPEC uh, is uh, reducing uh, the huge extent of uh, food uh, losses and uh, wastage. I think that uh, most of us know the, the numbers we are talking about about a third of uh, the global uh, food uh, uh, supply that is being uh, lost and, and uh, wasted. If we do the numbers by calories, it uh, looks a bit uh, better, but still uh, the numbers are uh, st uh, staggering. And uh, um, these losses are also uh, have a huge uh, impact on, um, on our planet. Uh, and if we uh, summarizes, uh, summarize the greenhouse uh, emission from uh, food waste uh, globally, uh, food, waste, sorry, food waste will be the third uh, nation after uh, China and the US in terms of uh, CO2 uh, emission. Uh, although uh, probably Donald Trump will not agree with my numbers, uh, it's still a, a a huge um, issue. Um, if we uh, uh, follow closely the, the food supply chain and, and production, uh, we can see that uh, it, of course, depends on which, on which region we are talking. Are we talking about a developing country or, uh, um, or um, other countries? But in terms of uh, Europe and US, uh, most of the uh, uh, about half of the waste and loss occurs uh, since food production uh, till marketing. And also we as consumers are responsible for uh, a, a high percentage of uh, these uh, waste um, and loss. Uh, another uh, important issue is, um, uh, is legislation, and I think that the European Union uh, is leading uh, globally in terms of uh, uh, its um, um, approach to tackle the issue of uh, food waste, and uh, we know that the European Parliament uh, has voted and is trying to make actions in order to uh, have uh, the uh, food waste by 2030. Another important issue that we try to tackle in uh, Nanopec is, uh, is enhancing uh, food safety uh, and uh, minimize uh, food recalls. Uh, we know that uh, a recall um, has a, a huge burden on, uh, on the uh, brand that uh, needs to do a recall just direct, an average direct uh, uh, cost of a recall is around uh, uh, $15 million, not including loss to uh, the brand uh, name and et cetera. Um, so that's why uh, we would like to develop uh, antimicrobial food packaging. And actually antimicrobial food packaging is a very wide uh, definition. We are talking about a packaging that uh, can kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms. And uh, we have uh, many types of microorganisms that we would like to tackle, um, specific microorganisms or uh, uh, the general uh, population of microorganisms in the food. Uh, currently, what we have uh, on the market are uh, basically um, uh, packaging that relies on um, uh, metal-based uh, additives, uh, mainly silver-based additives. Here you can see some of the, the brands in, in the film. And uh, they rely on migration of, uh, for example, silver ions and their direct contact with the microorganism that uh, they need to target. 
And uh, you can imagine that if we would like to um, produce um, uh, a food packaging, adding silver to a commodity plastic is uh, somewhat of an oxymoron in terms of uh, uh, cost and uh, also the impact on uh, the, uh, the properties of the plastics in terms of its uh, um, uh, clarity and other optical properties. Um, so what we envision is a packaging that uh, uh, includes a volatile antimicrobial agent in the packaging uh, film and that the antimicrobial uh, substances are released into the headspace of the packaging and therefore there is no need for direct contact between the food and the packaging, while in uh, silver-based uh, uh, packaging, you need uh, a direct contact between the food and, uh, and the film. So this is the, the general uh, concept of the project. Uh, what we would like in Nanopack is to bring this concept uh, as close as possible uh, to the market, and I will uh, go through the different uh, pilots and tasks in the project, but we uh, start with uh, uh, essential oils that are encapsulated in uh, a natural mineral, and I will go into detail soon. We compound these uh, nanocapsules with uh, commodity polymers, mainly uh, low-density polyethylene, and we uh, create these nanocomposites that are then uh, used uh, to produce uh, films in pilot lines and in, uh, hopefully in the commercial lines. And then we study uh, the antimicrobial properties of uh, these films against uh, for a variety of uh, uh, food products such as dairy uh, products uh, in collaboration with Arla, bakery uh, products and uh, fresh uh, meat. <coughs> so, what the main, uh, the core technology is that we take uh, the essential oils, we all know that they are highly volatile, and we encapsulate them in, uh, in a nanomaterial that is called the halocyte nanotubes. Uh, these are naturally occurring um, clay nanotubes, uh, and, uh, and then uh, we create these nanocapsules or loaded uh, nanotubes. And we can use mixtures of uh, essential oils, and this is what we do in the, in the project. Uh, the benefit of uh, these nanotubes, here you can see their uh, structure, is that, of course, they are naturally occurring materials, and uh, we can buy them in, in huge quantities. Uh, uh, they are already uh, added uh, to polymers in order to improve uh, the mechanical and physical properties of uh, polymers. And uh, one of the most important advantages is the low cost of uh, these uh, nanotubes. We are talking about between 4 to 10 euros per kilogram. Here you can see some uh, comparison between these uh, naturally occurring nanotubes and synthetic nanotubes such as carbon uh, nanotubes. Um, I won't go into details about uh, uh, safety and, uh, and because Margaret will talk about it la later, but this is, we put a lot of emphasis in the project. Uh, how safe is it to use uh, these halocyte nanotubes because they are relatively new uh, materials in the industry and Margaret will talk about it l uh, later on. Um, the next uh, component in our packaging, in addition to the halocyte nanotubes, are the essential oils. Uh, they are already well known for their antimicrobial uh, activity, and uh, they are used for uh, flavoring um, uh, food and drinks, uh, and they are approved for that. This is a, a, an issue that we need to tackle in Europe, because uh, in uh, the United States, essential oils are categorized as grass, and therefore we can uh, add them uh, as active components in packaging. While in Europe, they are only approved as uh, flavoring material. So if we declare them as antimicrobial uh, component in a food packaging, it is um, not allowed yet. 
So this is one of the uh, challenges that we are also tackling uh, in the project. Um, so how do we uh, produce uh, the films? So we take the loaded uh, nanotubes and we uh, melt compound them in high temperature using uh, existing uh, um, compounding uh, uh, instruments, extruders, and we exert high temperature as uh, high temperatures as needed, uh, depending on the polymers that uh, we are using. Here you can see some um, uh, TM images of uh, cross-sectioned uh, films where you can see that the nanotubes are finely distributed within the, the polymer. Uh, um, and you can see that uh, we get a very fine dispersion even at a single nanotube lev level within the films. Uh, and, and, and indeed, the, the optical properties and the mechanical properties of the films are, are uh, not uh, hampered by the addition of, of the nanotubes. Um, in some polymers, when we uh, produce them at very high temperature uh, and we don't use the uh, loaded halocyte nanotubes, we can have even boiling inside the extruder and as a result, we can get films that look like that, not really films, I would say fishnets or something like that, while if we use the loaded uh, nanotubes, uh, we can get uh, nice uh, films that will comply with, um, uh, with the demand of the industry. What allows that is the fact that when we uh, add, uh, when we encapsulate the essential oils in the nanotubes, uh, we can enhance their thermal stability, and these are uh, some TGA results. Um, this also allows us to retain uh, more uh, essential oils during the processing of, of the polymer. And uh, now I will describe how uh, all this operation works in Anopec. So we start uh, in Belgium with uh, our first pilot where we uh, load <coughs> the essential oils into the uh, nanotubes. Uh, we have uh, pristine nanotubes, meaning that as we buy them from uh, the, the manufacturer, and uh, we also do some processing for the uh, halocyte nanotubes uh, in order to increase their uh, loading uh, capacity. The loaded uh, halocyte nanotubes are then uh, sent either to Carmel or to Fraunhofer where they go through a compounding uh, step. And uh, at the end of this uh, process, we get uh, pellets that are then sent uh, from Israel to um, Austria to uh, Constantia Flexible where uh, we produce uh, films uh, with different uh, configurations and then the resulting films are being studied um, mostly in, uh, in CETA here in Spain uh, uh, and by our uh, food industry partners. Here you can see some large scale production uh, of uh, nanopack films in a uh, commercial line in, uh, in, uh, in Austria. This was done uh, in December, right before they cleaned their line. Uh, and Alfred says that in terms of the operation, it was quite positive with some uh, reservations, but I will not emphasize them in my talk, <laughs> naturally. Uh, here you can see some uh, packaging configuration also uh, produced in, uh, in Constantia. Uh, films that were produced by extrusion coating and can be used for, uh, for example, yogurt packaging. And I have to emphasize that the active uh, film is just coated uh, in the inner uh, side of the, of the packaging and some uh, pouches that can be used also for organoleptic studies if we pack water in them and can uh, study the effect of the packaging on the water taste, uh, et cetera. Um, so how do we assess the films that we produce in terms of their antimicrobial properties? We first start with the model uh, microorganisms, uh, mainly Listeria and uh, E. coli. And we run studies, uh, what we call uh, in vitro, 
meaning that we characterize the behavior uh, of the films uh, against these uh, two model microorganisms and against uh, several types of, um, uh, of uh, typical molds, uh, mostly uh, penicillium uh, commune and, um, and in combination of certain um, uh, cocktails and also uh, alternaria alternata. And you, here you can see some characteristic results where uh, if you um, uh, introduce just a control film uh, in this uh, Petri dish, you can see that after seven days, the, 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 the plate is completely full uh, with the mold, whereas at the other uh, end, if we use uh, the nanopack film, uh, you can see that there is no development of any molds. In the middle, there are our other uh, controls where we just incorporate uh, the active essential oils in the polymers without the, um, without the nanotubes, or if we just mix them all together without the encapsulation step. So definitely uh, the encapsulation step has uh, an important role in the, uh, in the overall process. Uh, after we uh, assess the in vitro uh, antimicrobial properties of the films and we find um, a, a good candidate, we move to uh, uh, studying the antimicrobial and antimicrobial activity of the films against uh, different uh, in different uh, uh, food systems uh, such as uh, bread, cheese, uh, fresh produce, etc. And what is also important uh, to note that in most of the studies, this is not correct for uh, meat and salmon, there is no direct contact between the packaging and the food. So uh, you have the food uh, not touching the, uh, the antimicrobial uh, film. And uh, we can see that in many systems we can get a, a nice uh, um, antimicrobial uh, activity and the reduction of several uh, logs uh, uh, in terms of the antimicrobial properties. I think that the most pronounced uh, effect is on uh, extending the shelf life of bakery uh, goods. And this is a very disgusting picture uh, of, uh, of a bread that uh, no one will want to eat. Uh, and, uh, and you can see the, the amazing effect of, of the packaging we can extend shelf life. Uh, uh, this is an all result by 27 days. Recent studies that we did on uh, folar bread that is a typical bread uh, from Portugal that is specifically popular in, uh, in Easter. And that's why uh, uh, our partner for Portug from Portugal were very interested in uh, studying this bread. We were, we, we were able to extend the shelf life to uh, two months. Um, uh, also in terms of extending shelf life of uh, um, fresh produce, for example, cherries, we can uh, increase uh, the shelf life uh, nicely. Uh, here we extended the shelf life by uh, two days, which uh, means an added value of uh, 40%. Uh, percent. Um, we have several challenges in the project, and I think uh, taking a, a project from the university to such a, a scale um, has its own uh, uh, challenges, especially for me as a, as a researcher uh, in the university, understanding the complexity uh, of the industry, uh, understanding the complexity of regulation and the standards, the fact that we need to uh, uh, comply with very strict uh, uh, food contact regulations, for example, and the differences between Europe and the US, for example, the use of essential oils in uh, Europe is, uh, uh, is strict. We will need to submit uh, dossiers for EFSA for each essential oils that we would like to use and declare it as an antimicrobial. While uh, in the US uh, it's different because essential oils are grass and we can uh, add them to the packaging. Not to mention that we have a nanomaterial 
uh, added to the packaging and I think that uh, the public is also uh, concerned when you say nano, that's why we have a group uh, at the project uh, uh, from Aarhus University that, stu that studies the consumer acceptance uh, to the packaging in general, active packaging, and specifically uh, to nanomaterials when they are used in, uh, uh, in context uh, of food uh, packaging. Uh, not to mention issues of uh, cost and, uh, and we need to achieve antimicrobial activity uh, that will be uh, highly effective while complying with this regulation. And since we use um, essential oils, we can't avoid the organoleptic uh, issue, uh, which is also um, a bottleneck uh, in the project. So we need to keep the essential oils at a very low concentration to comply uh, with regulation, with the proper organoleptic profiles, and achieve uh, a high antimicrobial activity. Uh, and all these in an industrial uh, setting. Uh, it's uh, it's um, very challenging. Uh, so for the uh, upcoming uh, we don't have an upcoming year, we only have upcoming seven months, actually, six months. Uh, we are tackling uh, uh, our organoleptic issues. We are working very hard on submission of uh, dossiers to EFSAs of uh, the halocyte nanotubes and the uh, anti and the essential oils that we use and as antimicrobials. And uh, our other partners are uh, trying uh, to tackle uh, issues that are related to consumer acceptance, as I mentioned, and uh, uh, elaborating uh, business plans. Uh, so thank you for listening. And, um, and I hope that we can bring uh, some progress to the field of uh, antimicrobial uh, packaging. As you see, as you seen this morning, uh, many of the researchers discussed uh, the, the, the huge potential of these materials, but uh, when we try to move them from a lab to uh, uh, the industry and then to the consumer, the barriers are very, very uh, high. And uh, I now realize that even three years of a European uh, funded project are, uh, are barely enough uh, for that. Thank you.